Welcome to the Wasting Time Podcast. I'm Chris. And I am Nick. And this is our Escape the Fate episode. What episode number? Chris, do you know these things? Off the top of my head, I don't know, like 133, just... something like that, I think. So you've stopped caring now. Yeah. Yeah, so this is our Craig Mabbit Escape the Fate episode. But we're just here for a little intro before we get into my chat with him that I had a few weeks back. What's What's new otherwise, then? I don't know. It feels like a busy time for us. We've recorded so many episodes recently and it's just like trying to get them out in an orderly fashion. And then obviously with a couple of other projects we're working on and then we're trying to work on our Christmas build up. So I feel like there's been a lot of wasting time podcast things happening recently. Yeah, this is it. I mean, there's so many conversations happening between us outside of a podcast episode that you yeah. kind of lose track of what we have and haven't said in an episode, I guess, really. Yeah. But I guess um, we can maybe talk about, we talked about Slam Dunk uh, lineup quite a bit in detail because that came we out did. last week, but I don't think we talked about the download lineup that was announced what, a few, well, last week, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I think, I think, uh, I think that came after Slam Dunk, but we definitely haven't and, discussed it on here. Yeah. And you know, We've talked about, we went to, we were obviously at Leeds last year and while it was great, we had a great time that, you know, probably wasn't the best fit for us as, um, from like a genre perspective, from an alternative perspective. Um, yeah. and we kind of said like next year, let's look at potentially download cause it'd be a bit closer to our world and, you know, probably be- a, a better fit for us in addition to slam dunk and yeah. potentially Pittsburgh as well, uh, for called festival out in Pittsburgh. So, um, uh seeing the lineup, I'm not I, I think I'm not well, we'll have to see what Leeds Leeds lineup is, but I'm not that crazy about it. Like I was expecting more more for us. It's normally a little heavier in our world, I would say, than it is this time around. I assume yeah. like some more things will be added to it. But I know where you're yeah. coming from. I mean you've got Green Day, obviously, you know, one of the biggest biggest bands in the world which you know chris you know you absolutely just love and you know uh, yeah i would, would desperately love to see them jimmy world like they're probably the like the only real big big band that we both are really really you know really into and would be keen to see yeah that's probably fair in that in that next section me first in the gimme gimme's mallory knox i mean what is there anything bad nerves you're a fan of those guys you You've chatted to those guys in the past, haven't you? Yeah, we watched them in um, Leeds Festival as well, didn't we? Uh, there's, there's things here and there. I see there's Trophy Eyes. Obviously, you're a big fan of them. Oh, I didn't see that. Are they hidden away in the kind of bottom they're, they're of the, in the poster sa- Yeah, the same, sec- same section as uh, that Bad Nerves are in. And there's a few okay. a few things from our world in that. Arrows in Action, Lolo. Yes, yeah, so there's, there's a handful of things. <laughs> Yeah, we've got Weezer as well. Um, you know, Don Broco, like big band, aren't they? McFly. Bloody hell, how McFly got that line up? But it does say plus many more to be announced, so there might be. There you go. I'm sure, I'm there sure there'll be a handful more bands that we'd be into that'll be on it. My missus just bought a ticket for the uh, Buster McFly gig in Newcastle for next year. Do you know how much a ticket it was? I dread to think. £130. That's insane. I know. She didn't want to tell me. She tried to hide it from me for from a long for for a long time. <laughs> She's like, mm. I was like, what? 70, 80 quid? She was just like looking very sheepish sheepish when I suggested suggested it might be 70, 80 quid. And then she's <laughs> like, Yeah, a bit more. And I just kept going up and up and like my face just yeah, dropped. I thought you meant for a moment she tried to hide the fact that she was going from here for a bit. Well, I think it was probably a bit of a bit of both. Yeah. Okay. Uh, she did make the the case that you know if you were to see both those bands separately and like on two separate nights, probably paying 120, 130 quid. I certainly wouldn't be paying that to see either of those bands. Yeah, I'd be wanting to. I'd be wanting to receive money to go to uh, go and see that show. It's a bit of a weird, but I mean, Busted have got a bit of a I don't know, like a they've got a bit of a stronghold in our genre in this country. I, don't, I think it's like yeah. I think there's like the really short like age gap between like being dismissive and like being accepting. Yes, um, yeah. I've got some people at work who are kind of who like similar music to me. They're yeah. about like five, 
five years younger, five, six young, yeah. years younger than me. Yeah. And they, they like, they, they don't have this, this perception of Busted that, that we have. So, they just like yeah. think it's another kind of pop punk band that they think yeah, are great. Basically. Yeah, I wonder. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if they've just been adopted by a slightly, slightly younger generation. Yep, I think you're right. I've noticed that with some of my friends a few years younger than me. They were almost like a gateway band for them as well. So, like, yeah. whereas for you and I, as you say, they kind of came along as this kind of manufactured Rip. boy band that was yeah yeah like a kind of a rip off basically yeah exactly. So, like, record execs saw you know, some 41s and the Blinks selling records, like, oh, we can make a little manufactured one. Yeah, yeah. so we all, yeah. we kind of always had that perception, of, you know, which was true, but I think I think you're absolutely right. I think that kind of, the people who are just a couple of years behind us, yeah, would have been yeah. very young at the time, so, yeah, would have been different. That's interesting. So you go, download, we'll see, eh? Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. have to we'll have to make a call. See if there's anything else floating around that 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 ticks 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 a box for us. I guess, Rudy. Still early days in the in the festival curation time of year, isn't it? What else have we got to talk about? Any gigs for you coming up? Yeah, I'm going to see Menzingers um, just oh, yeah. over a, in about a week and a half from now. So very much looking forward to that. They're playing the Underworld, which is where I saw um, Swimmers and Love Breakers play the other day it's a very small venue for menzingers to be doing so that should be fun the full it's, house you expect oh yeah it is i think it's sold it's sold out pretty quickly well they're doing two nights there and they both sold pretty oh, quickly. Right. oh nice cool yeah always putting a good show you went to i just remembered you went to yellow card story of the year very recently yeah i think i believe since our last episode how was that was it cool yeah up in glasgow last week so they were just they were solid we, we were kind of uh, discussing whether before the show whether that you know they were going to do Ocean Avenue from start to finish in order and um, how that was going to play out because the album kind of starts really strong, doesn't it? It's got all their big tracks up top and then it really slows yeah. down. And it was like, this is like if they were to do it in that running order, it kind of wouldn't work. So they threw that out the window basically and they played, I think they played every song from Ocean Avenue, but it was just okay. it was completely like mixed in with like. With all with other songs, you know, they did lights and sounds yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, yeah, good show, good venue. I wasn't very well, so it's like just we're in weather spoons beforehand, doing shots just to try and like <laughs> to, just to get 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 up for this gig. And not and annoyingly, Jimmy Eat World were on the next night in the same venue. So yeah, could have stayed. I, I would have stayed. Yeah, I would have stuck around had I known that a friend of mine, an old friend of mine, Liam, who used to play in a band with, he was up there with us. With his girlfriend, um, so met up with him. Haven't seen him for 10, 15 years. Yeah, he actually gave me a follow on Instagram following that. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was cool that, yeah. that you hooked up with him. Yeah, he's a fan of the show, so he's asking a lot oh. about kind of uh, nice. what we're doing, which was nice. It's just good to Hello, Liam. Him, but yeah, there you go. So, yeah, they stuck around for, for day two for Jimmy Eat World as well. So, right. I understand it was very good. But yeah, good time had by all. Next day was pretty rough, but. Yeah, but other than that, I've not really got anything coming up for the rest of the year. There is grade two, grade two gig, I think, in Newcastle next weekend. I'm not sure I'm going to catch it. I'm going to try, but got a few things going on that weekend. So okay. hopefully so I can get one. See those boys. Yeah, it's a Sunday night as well. So ah, uh, okay, um, yeah. So we'll just have to wait and see. Fingers crossed, I get along because they always put yeah. on a, a good, good show. I was going to say let's compare our on repeat songs on Spotify for fun, but maybe. Let's hold off on that. Maybe we could do something with Spotify Wrapped coming out. We could post something on Instagram comparing ours and maybe ask Greg, our, our third member, if he wants to share his as well. So maybe do something around that. I reckon if there's nothing else, we'll probably get into today's episode. What's um, what Are you a fan or familiar with Escape the Fate? A, yeah, a little bit, not massively. I don't yeah. have a long history of them, but yeah. No, a couple of their songs. Yeah, I was kind of before my interview with Craig doing a bit of a deep dive, and they do have some tunes. And I just thought, well, obviously everyone's about to hear it, but like I thought he was a very uh, uh, charismatic guy. He was a, he was a pleasure to interview. And this was done a couple of months ago, so apologies. We'll be talking. You'll hear us looking ahead to things like when we were young, but it's still super interesting to get his perspective on things like that. I think so. Yeah, this is a good one. Enjoy. <laughs> 
one minute late. There were some Zoom updates and stuff trying to install, and then it deleted all my backgrounds I had, so I was trying to find a quick one. I'm I'm usually sitting inside the Millennium Falcon. Oh, really? So I'm, I'm, <laughs> but I couldn't find it in my folders, and I'm like, ah, I'll just do this one. Still, it's quite... Like, it it's quite an impressive setup you've got. I take it I take it you're at home based on the the setup that you have. I am at home, yes. Where is home? Is it's in uh Tempe, Arizona. How how long have you been based out there for? Um I've been here the last 6 years, but I was born here. Um, okay. Moved around a lot as a kid cuz my father was in the military, so I was always the new kid in school, but it was always somewhere else back to arizona for a bit somewhere else back to arizona for a bit and then moved back to az again around seventh grade and then moved around to a couple cities couple new schools but still within the same state and then i always told myself i couldn't wait till i was an adult so i could just stay in one place yeah <laughs> and uh by the time i was 17 i was touring with my band right. so <laughs> yeah 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 the perfect job for staying in one place <laughs> yeah so moved around a lot in my like early 20s and yeah six years ago i found myself coming back to arizona again and i've i've been here ever since perfect time with you being at home currently what what's life look like when you're not on the road what's like a kind of typical day for you in 2024 at home well usually my days are get my coffee go to the gym come home I jump on Twitch. I do a lot of streaming on there. Yeah. Um, then I usually end that around midday, like 3 or 4 p.m., get some yeah. lunch, try to do some adulting, you know, check on the dogs, clean up the house a bit. Does the trash need to go out? Yeah. How many texts and emails did I miss during my stream? Let me answer those. <laughs> yeah. See how my kids are doing. Um, and then kind of hang out with the wife, watch some shows, rinse and repeat, and do it all again the next day. Sometimes no. there's a fly day here and there. Um, yeah. About a week and a half ago, I actually flew out to London because my buddy really? Paul, who plays guitar for Asking, um, mm -hmm. is self-funding and directing and starring in his own film. And he asked if I wow. wanted to be a part of it. And I was like, why not? Like, I'm trying to be more of a yes man. Yeah. I'm like, I'm chilling at home. I'm not on tour. Do I want to fly overseas for to not play a show? I don't care. Let's do it. It'll be fun. <laughs> okay. So went out there, did that. And then uh, any other free time I get, like I'm talking with my sister right now about a weekend to fly up to where my siblings are and my kids are to hang out there before I have to leave, okay. leave for tour again. So yeah, it's in and out. It's very busy, but that's kind of what my, my days off the road when I'm not doing anything else. That's what it is. Gym, stream, eat, hang, do it all over again repeat again so what, mm -hmm. what was what was the uh london experience like for this what, what kind of film is he making um it's called evil weights okay. i don't know how much more info i can give about it i understand okay i landed it was like two and a half three hour drive every day to go to the different filming locations and uh i can't remember the name of the spot we went to but it was this estate and it was just it was gorgeous like the whole the whole day I was walking around and I'm like, I could totally retire here. <laughs> this really? Is, this is amazing. So this, yeah. Was this kind of outskirts of London kind of a location, this estate? Kind of, yeah. I mean, it was, were we closer to Cambridge? I think we were like two hours outside of Manchester. Oh, okay. Just kind of in the middle of nowhere at some estate. Yeah. And it was... It was just beautiful. It was a beautiful day outside. And yeah. So I posted a couple clips on my Instagram and I know Paul's Paul's posting a bunch of stuff and he's he's doing some more filming in November. You can see all of that at Paul Bartolome Music. He's posting all the clips and stuff. So but he's getting ready to go out on the road with asking if he's not already on the road. So And uh speaking of going on the road, so obviously you've got quite a fairly it looks like a heavy tour cycle coming this this autumn starting in um south america if i'm not mistaken starting in south america yeah so yeah uh this weekend we have a show in el paso it's a mm -hmm. free show at speaking rock casino uh we've done it a couple times it's robert's tribe his native mm -hmm. american tribe they have a casino out there we go out there we play a free show it's always a great time so i'm excited for that we're also yeah. using that show as an opportunity. It's always tough to get all the dudes together. So we're right. like, all right, we're going to be together in El Paso. Let's rehearse 
for this upcoming South America run that we're doing, which ends with the We Missed Ourselves Fest in Mexico. Um, Okay. and the promoter out there has requested that we do a This War Is Ours set. I don't know if that's because when we were young is doing that for their lineup. All the bands are playing some of their popular albums uh, Yeah. front to back. So we're doing a This War Is Ours set. Aside from one of the shows, they requested we do the self-titled album front to back. Okay. So we're like, all right, we got to get together and rehearse because we're doing Yeah. This War Is Ours and then randomly just playing another album. And it's not the normal set we've been doing recently. So Right. we definitely got to get together and jam these tracks. Once we come home from that, Uh, we have When We Were Young out in Vegas, and Yep. then we head out and we do our first acoustic tour that we've ever done, or acoustic set. We're joining Theory of a Dead Man, uh, mostly on the East Coast of the U.S., Yep. for a run of shows. And then we go out to L.A. to do kind of like a holiday show prior to the Christmas holiday, and then we have that holiday, and then we do Tucson, which is kind of going to be a New Year's show, which we did last year, and those shows are always fun, so... That'll round Okay. out the year and just locking some things in for 2025 and Yeah, yeah. trying to find some time in between that to get back in the studio and start working on the next Okay. release. So go, go, Wow. go. Yeah, busy times. Um, first, darling, that back a little bit on on the subject of South America. One of you toured there much before, and two, if you have like, what's your pool like there? Do you have like, is there a, a big escape the following, uh, uh, Oh, escape the yeah, fate escape the fate following following. down <laughs> there, yeah, even yeah. there, yeah. Uh, yeah, South America does does really well. Um, Mm -hmm. I think that's because we don't go down there very often. Um, yeah it sort of reminds me of when we go to the Philippines is always fantastic. We really haven't been for quite some time, so I've been telling okay management, hey, let's look into getting back to the Philippines. yeah So it's oh it's wow great. And we've never done, am I correct in saying that we've never done this War is Ours down there? I cannot remember, so don't quote me on it. <laughs> okay I don't yeah yeah think we've done this war is ours down in South America. I yeah think we might have done the self-titled tour before we went and did it in Australia. Right, But okay. man, with the with the go go go, my brain is just starting to become Yeah, it's a lot to kind of, it's a lot to retain, to be fair. Yeah, in terms of, so obviously you mentioned like wanting to think about studio time and looking to your next release and all of that. Um, just want to talk a little bit about the the kind of, so you had have, you have the Out of the sh Shadows record and then I guess you did like a deluxe version of that. We did, yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Was the thinking of doing a deluxe as opposed to like a new EP was was it because you could have it in the same sort of album cycle and part of that is that kind of the thinking Sort of doing of, it that you know, way? I'm I'm a little bummed that there wasn't more of a setup for it because it's not your typical deluxe album. Okay. You know, we always end up in the studio. There's always two or three songs that didn't make the cut for the Of course. initial uh, base record. And Yeah. then, you know, everybody behind the scenes, whether it be label or management, they're always like, oh, you know, we'll revisit these, maybe, you know, finish them up and then we'll just release a deluxe edition of the album. Well, when Yeah. we went back there to finish those songs, we ended up with nine or 10 songs. So I was faced with the choice when everybody was telling me, it's like, all right, let's pick two or three of these. And then we have seven songs done for the next album. I said, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I don't want to have... the majority of the next album <laughs> done within a week just because we finished a bunch more songs and yeah then okay we wait a year or two and we re i'm gonna be sick and tired of these songs let's just give everybody all of them yeah instead of calling it a deluxe let's call it out of the shadows 2.0 like it's a video game dlc release yeah you know yeah like hey it's yeah a whole new campaign added onto the base game you know that's yeah that was my yeah thought process behind it okay so i'm like let's just okay do that Um, you know, they put a little bit of attention and promotion into one of the, one of the new singles, which was called Dearly Departed. Um, and Bert from the used lended his vocals to that, which was, I was very excited about that huge, huge used Mm -hmm. fan. Very cool. Um, Does Have, your relationship with him kind of go back a back a while, or have you kind of become friends recently, or what, what's the deal there? yeah, I mean, we've never had major bro down one-on-one -on -one moments, but we've, Mm -hmm. we've crossed paths and known each other for Sure. quite a while now. <laughs> well, obvi obviously, you both have the Feldman. Did Fel Feldman do this this last record? Yes, he did. Yeah, Yeah. yeah. And I know, obviously, your history with Feldman goes back a long way. And 
Oh, so you say so he he... goes back a long way and now it's he he's family now now yeah because you're brother you're married to his wife's sister right is that yes right yeah. <laughs> okay wow and so that's that's how i met kind of bert so long ago is because i you yeah, know of course me and my wife became friends and she had been around obviously since feldy had his very first studio and was doing the used first record so yeah going back some yeah, time going, going back a, a long time and are you yeah. so are you guys on big noise yes we were on big noise for the for the out of the shadows record do you want to talk a little bit about your your, your side project dead rabbits what's yes. um how, how did that kind of come about and how much time do you kind of get to focus on that i'm guessing not well, much the rest of this year with how yeah, your I know. schedule looks right <laughs> i always wish i had a lot more time to do that so yeah dead rabbits originally started as just a passion project, you know, a side okay. project. Um, ETF was going through, ugh, man, I feel like ETF's always going through a bunch of stuff, but <laughs> was going through a bunch of stuff back in around 2010. You know, some members were waning, didn't want to be part of the band. We had just wrapped up, I believe it was the Ungrateful album with okay. Feldy. One of the guys didn't like the mix and, wanted to scrap the whole thing and then ended up not being in the band. Anyways, there was a lot of downtime and uncertainty in the yeah. air. And I'm like, I want to do something. I want to, I want to create something because I remembered back before the escape guys asked me to sing for the band. Yeah. Um, after I had left bless the fall. Yeah. I wanted to start something new. So I started the word alive. Yeah, Once this yeah. War is Ours album came out with Escape and Word Alive was getting some offers, they didn't want to be pigeonholed into being a side project and kind of wait around while I was, you know, out touring with Escape and they were just sitting at home. Yeah. So they got Telly and, you know, off to the races for them and they're still out there crushing it. Funny enough, they're out there with Asking. I know we were talking about Asking a little bit yeah, earlier. It's, it's all um, interlinked in some way. Yeah, so pump for those guys. But when that happened, I didn't, I didn't have that kind of heavier project, my roots, you know, the, the bless the fall breakdown sort of thing. Cause escape has yeah. it, but it's a little more focused on lead guitar and, and shredding and guitar solos yeah. and leans a little bit into that, a little bit into pop. Yeah. And so I, I always miss that heavy stuff. So around 2010, I was talking to my buddy, Caleb, um, who was with attack attack. Now he's with bear tooth, just taking over the world. He's like, come out to Ohio to my studio and let's work on some stuff. So flew out there, worked on a bunch of stuff that became the first Dead Rabbit CP. You know, we had a conversation about just release this as your solo project. And I tried to imagine the style of music it was going out on tour with other similar heavy bands. And the image I had in my head was always how bands have the scrims and backdrops. And I'm like, yeah. I can't imagine going out on tour with my peers that have similar, you know, bands and sounds. And having scrims that just say Craig Mabbitt on it. That, that seems. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I yeah. don't, I don't like that image that I have in my head. So let me think of a name for this project. And uh, still to this day, anytime I see an interview or a print of something and it, and it mentions my name and it, everybody spells my last name wrong because they hear Mabbitt, they think rabbit, they mm -hmm. spell it the exact same way, which is two B's <laughs> and one T. Yeah. My yep. last name has two T's. Yep. So I'm like, all right, that's kind of funny. And I was watching a lot of gangs in New York at the time, too. So I'm like, I'm going to name this project Dead Rabbits, but I'm going to spell rabbit incorrectly. And I'm going to spell it like my last name. I'm going to give it Got two it. T's. Okay. So okay. that'll be like the nod that it's a solo thing, but it'll it'll have a name. You know, so that's yeah. that's how it came about. That's how the Edge of Reality EP came to be. Um and then I just went for it, you know, did a couple tours, a couple shows here and there. And anytime I get some free time, I work on some new music. So, yeah, you know, there's fans that have been around and have known about Dead Rabbits for a little over 10 years now, which blows my mind to think about. Mm -hmm. um, and now I'm finally like diving deeper into it and working with Howard Benson, who escaped the fate oh, wow. of work okay. in the past yeah. Yeah. Uh, for a new full length. So anytime i get some free time i'm I'm really going to be grinding and focusing on that project okay so it's so it's definitely sounds like it's going to be an ongoing thing for the foreseeable future yeah i want to make it less of a side thing and more of a more of a focus 
which okay. is tough. You know, it's kind of a tightrope I have to walk on because, for instance, recently I had a gig with Dead Rabbits playing with Scary Kids, Scaring Kids in Tucson. All right. Yeah. And I had to pull off of that gig because Escape the Fate had to go play in Fort Erie in Canada. Mm -hmm. So okay. I, I still have to treat it as Escape the Fate is the main you okay, know, so like in the up. priority. Okay. Yeah, okay. I can't tell yeah. all the other guys. Oh, sorry, I'm going out here and doing this with dead rabbits. Unless, okay. of course, yeah, the tour. I have to weigh them. You know, I show see. in Tucson or escape the So it's difficult, but I'm doing I'm doing my best. So we'll see. Let me take it back to joining Escape the Fate, and like you know, we don't we don't have to go into details and spend too much time on this because I'm sure you know it was you joined. I don't know, like 2008, 2007, something like that. And it's yeah. been a long, it's been a long time. So this, this yeah. is well covered, but like, just give me a little bit of what it was like in those days. Were you, were you like a fan of what, when you were in uh, Bless the Fall, were you a fan of Escape the Fate? Like what was, what was your relationship like prior to joining? So I, I became a fan of Escape the Fate because when I first heard about them, it's because we were, both of our bands were going out on Warp Tour. Mm-hmm. Was it the 05 Warped or the 06 Warped? I can't remember exactly, but we had a tour set up following Warped Tour together called the Black okay. on Black Tour. And AP Magazine did like a whole back cover feature about the tour coming up. Obviously, I got out on Warped and I wanted to check out Escape the Fate, watch the guys mm -hmm. in the band because I knew we had a tour coming up. So became yep. a fan of them over that tour became friends as much as you know i thought on my end that we were becoming friends and yeah went out on stage with them a couple times and then we went out on the black on black tour and following that tour bless the fall had a tour with silverstein overseas which okay. was a pretty lengthy overseas tour for our first time going over there yeah. um and escape headed out on on whatever they were doing and you know, I guess, I guess Ronnie had some is ran into some issues and yeah. I was running into some issues of my own with bless the fall overseas. I was having some personal problems at home with my child and it just, it started seeming like it was too much. Like I was so grateful for the opportunities I had and I was out here on the road, yeah. but I was living off of $5 a day per diem at the time. Yeah. Um, with a brand new child at home and i'm like and and also sorry I, to cut in you couldn't have been very old at the time as well no no i was like freshly 18 at the time yeah man that's you're just a kid yourself you know yeah so i'm like this i don't know if this is working like this yeah. is my dream this is my passion i want to do music for a living and it was so difficult like i remember that tour specifically i was i was old enough to drink overseas and that's right. where that's where my alcoholism kind of started. I mean, we're talking okay. about like liquor in a water bottle. Like that's where it began because yeah. I was yeah. so I was just so bummed out. I, I it felt like I was stuck between a rock and a hard place. I didn't know what to do. So I sat all the guys down with management. I said, listen, I don't know if I can do this. I, I need to go home and I need to be a dad. Mm -hmm. This isn't bringing in what it needs to bring in. You know, I had done some digging and found out that management was kind of taking a little bit too much money from the group. Oh, the other guys okay. didn't really care okay. as much at the time. And I was like, I, this, I can't do this. Yeah. So I flew home. I was like, I need to go pay attention to, to my child. Went home, filled out a bunch of applications. Things weren't going very well on that aspect. And I'm like, you know what? Why didn't I just stick it out? I should have gave myself at least a year. Yeah, Like there was a month left of the tour. I should have stuck it out, but I was just so in my head, which is a horrible place to be is up here. Sure. And I felt like I was just being a piece of shit, essentially. I'm like, what am I doing out here? I'm out here drinking, not making much money. And I have a kid at home. I got to go home and take care of my kid. Got home, got clear headed, was like, no, focus on this. Go out there, do it. Once okay. I made that decision, the Bless the Fall guys were like, well, we were thinking we didn't want you to come back. And I'm like, well, oh. shit okay that sucks were um, you like at that point just thinking i may have blown my chance to be in a band for a living for like yes i'm like people. i yeah. i blew it i blew it yeah. i was i was on a tour overseas 
with Silverstein at the time, which was a band, you know, I used to watch their music videos before yeah. I went to school. I'm yeah. like, what was I yeah. thinking? Big bands. You yeah. know, in my head, I'm like, I felt like I was making the right decision. Yeah. But what the fuck am I doing, man? I, I screwed it up. So I don't remember how I got involved in conversations about joining a band called a Skylit Drive. Um, but I was talking to my buddy, Joey, who plays guitar for that band. And he was mm -hmm. sending me some demos. I told him what happened with Bless the Fall. I'm like, I don't want to lose my chance. You guys need a singer right now. Let's go. Um, and how the story goes is I went on my little Nokia phone, went, scrolled down to the name Joey, gave him a call, and I called the wrong Joey. Apparently, right. I had two Joeys in my phone. Okay. One of them was Joey from a Skylet Drive. One of them was Joey who managed to escape the fate. Right. And when I okay. called when I called the wrong Joey and said, Hey, yeah. where are those demos? I want to get writing. He's like, Who is this and what demos are you talking about? I'm like, it's Craig. <laughs> Craig who? I'm like, Craig Mabbitt, bless the fall, Craig. And Joey, the manager, was like, Oh my God, dude, what's up? How you been? Cause yeah. you know, I had met him through that tour we had just done. Sure, sure. It's like, what are you talking about demos? So he gave me a quick rundown. Listen. We're out of singer right now. We need somebody to come fill in for these three shows we have coming up because the guys don't want to cancel them. They're great opportunities. It's the Extreme Thing Festival in Vegas. It's Bamboozle in California. And I think it was like a random headliner in between those at Chain Reaction. Okay. He's like, would you be interested in coming out and hanging out with the guys? And, you know, they kind of think you just do the screaming thing from that Bless the Fall tour. But, you know, would you like to fly out to Vegas and do a rehearsal and, and, fill in for these shows i'm like yeah yeah i got nothing else going on i got nothing else to lose so flew out to vegas the guys were excited they wanted me to do it obviously i was inquiring with them about what was going on with them internally because i you know remembered the tour and hanging out and we were all friends yeah um so i actually recommended to them i'm like let me fill in for these three shows and then you should probably get your singer back because i'm going through all this other stuff right and it's very difficult to replace a singer so after I did those three shows, I guess there was a period of time where they had brought him back and then a bunch of stuff happened and he was going to prison for X amount of time and they mm -hmm. asked me to to fully come back and fill in. I'm yeah. like, all right, why? Like, what else do I got going on? I lost one yeah. opportunity. I have another opportunity. I'm not going to let it pass me by. I was lucky yeah. enough to have the first one. And now here yeah. I am with a second one. So I'm yeah, definitely yeah. putting my foot down and going out there and doing the best that I can do. Um, and long story short, how it got solidified and how it just became the rest is history yeah. is Feldman had heard that I was now singing for this band and right. he had attended the show in LA from that black on black tour I was mentioning earlier. So mm -hmm. he'd seen the show. I, I guess I climbed up to the rafters like I used to do and jumped into the crowd and yeah. I guess Feldy was like, oh, my God, that singer is nuts. I, I love that guy. I don't know about the music, though. And then he watched Escape. He's like, oh, I love the music. So when Feldy yeah. heard that that singer had joined that band, he contacted yeah. management immediately and said, yeah. get the guys out here into the studio. I want to be the one that does the album. Oh, nice. So as soon as they had asked me to join within the next yeah. month, we were in the van driving out to California to go in the studio with John. That became This War Is Ours, and the yeah. rest is history. The rest is but history. A lot of, lot of crazy stuff happening. Yeah. That time. Man, you've, you, you've, you've had an interesting life, man. It's, uh, oh, yeah. I think it's fair to say. <laughs> it has been very difficult. A roller coaster, a yeah. rickety, rickety old wooden roller coaster that still has not got to the end. I'm still <laughs> riding it. Real quick, so that, the, the, the record, that, that first record that you did, the, the, and the first one with Feldman, I guess. Do you feel that he kind of brought some of his kind of like, because obviously, you know, he, as we'd mentioned before, he'd done the used and story, story of the year, and he had done some heavier stuff, but he was mm -hmm. kind of known for that kind of more pop stuff, pop punk stuff. Do you think he brought some of that onto the Escape the Fate sound that wasn't there before? He definitely brought that in there. You know, I always tell yeah. the guys he was like the sixth member of yeah. the band because I had joined and we were jamming and writing some demos together. The one song that we had written together before I did those fill-in shows was the flood. Okay. I think there's still a video um, 
from either bamboozle or extreme thing where we're playing the flood and if you watch that youtube video it's almost a completely different song right and we got in with john and did the flood yeah. that's on the this war is ours album and you can hear yeah. a lot of the feldy influence when it comes to the pop elements and stuff but yeah. he was a sixth member of the band because i had just come in we worked on a couple demos and he really helped put it together and i still remember at the time i was so nervous i was yeah. having an identity crisis having all the same personal problems i was having but really wanted to go for it and not not fuck up this new opportunity that i had and you yeah. know we were finishing songs like ashley and yeah. i'm like all right yeah, yeah, yeah. i have somewhat of a fan base from bless the fall kind of heavier yeah. songs yeah we did it was a little poppy but the music was still kind of heavy but when yeah. i heard ashley baby i'm like everybody's gonna hate this i can't <laughs> I, I can't do this this is not i'm yeah, like yeah. but you know what screw it let's just do it it's a new project it's a new thing let's just do it yeah. and now i mean we we play heavy festivals sometimes and the crowd's like ashley ashley they want, <laughs> they want to hear that song so i learned back then and i'm still trying to learn today yeah maybe the things that I don't like are the things that everybody else is going to like. Well, yeah, so I was, I was going to, I was going to pull you up on that because I, I was watching another interview you did a few months ago. And I, you mentioned at one point, like the, in terms of the music that Escape the Fate does, that you're definitely more of a fan of like the, the heavier side of things, mm -hmm. which is interesting because I'm the opposite man. Cause I'm like a pop punk kid. So I like the yeah. kind of, you know, the more popular. Well, see, I like it's, it's different because I like the music to be heavy and I like it to have those, heavy moments but mm -hmm. even if you listen to his last walk from bless the fall and you listen to some of those melodies there's a lot of like r&b hip-hop influence because that's what i grew okay. up on I, I grew up getting into my dad's vinyl collection and loving bands like aerosmith and journey and, and def leppard yeah. and motley crew but yeah. i was also really really into to r&b what music kind of at like the time like 90s r&b at the time i guess oh yeah all yeah. that stuff like Genuine and Bill yeah. Dev DeVoe. And, and obviously that kind of turned into, I'm not afraid to say it, I, I listened to a lot of Backstreet Boys and NSYNC. Some great and, melodies uh, there, to be fair. Oh, yeah, for sure. The melodies were amazing. And then yeah. I got a little bit older and Linkin Park came out. Right. And yeah. this was yeah. like a prime mix of all the genres of music that yeah. I was really enjoying at the time. So I was like the biggest Linkin Park fan. That was my yeah. first live concert I ever attended. Was it really? It was, yeah, it was the Project Revolution tour. It was Linkin Park, Mudvayne, Hoobastank, Adema, and Cypress Hill. It was all the bands <laughs> that was on that show. <laughs> Not, nice And mix. then from that, that got me, you know, watching MTV and I discovered The Used. And then The Used got me into Under Oath. And then, under because Under Oath was... Kind of like the use, but a little heavier. And then yeah, Under Oath yeah. got me into even heavier bands like yeah, yeah, yeah. As I Lay Dying and It Dies Today. And then the, you know, all bets were off. I was yeah. a huge fan. And I was like, from that moment from the Linkin Park show, I was like, I have to do live music. I have to be in a band. And at the time I was just yeah. in the marching band playing the saxophone. But I'm like, this is what I want to do. I have to figure out how to do it. Thoughts on the new Linkin Park song? I think it sounds like a Linkin Park song. Yeah. Well, that's, you know, I it, guess that would be important for it, wouldn't it? Without, yeah, that's kind of what you want. Yeah. Without his voice, and, and it does as a huge fan, and that was my first concert. And literally the moment that Linkin Park during that Project Revolution tour, when they played My December, which was like a B-side secret track, I think it was at the time, and I loved it. Mm -hmm. Maybe he wasn't looking at me, but he was looking in my general direction. And I feel okay. like we locked eyes and I was singing yeah. the lyrics back to him. And it was that moment that really just yeah. touched my soul. And I was like, I have to do this. Like, that's yes. what lit the fire in my belly. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe he wasn't looking at me, but I thought he was. And that's what lit the fire in my belly yeah. to want to do this. So I owe all the credit to what I'm still doing today. That original fire that got lit in my belly to Chester. So big the fan. Chester yeah. But I have been through it in my own personal life. I get it. Yeah. I know yeah. playing music is what you do for a living. It's got to be the hardest thing in the world to replace somebody like that in mm -hmm. a band that size, somebody yeah. that impactful. I get it. I know why some people are upset, but I also understand yeah. it. It's great to yeah. hear the music. It does make me miss him even more, but it's great that they're still creating yeah. and they're still yeah. going out there and playing the songs that he used to sing and still keeping his memory alive. 
So that's my opinion on it. I think it's great. I would love to go catch a show. And I definitely know how difficult it is. I think if yeah. anybody knows well, how difficult it is to replace yeah. someone yeah. and all the hate you get. Yeah. Well, I was just I was just gonna guy. ask that. Like, was that <laughs> was that a thing that lasted for a while? Like, or did or you know, what was what did the balance? Lasted like? a while. It's still going still, on. Yeah, that's, that's I enough. still get called the new guy. Um <laughs> it's it's rough, man, because you you put so much time and effort and heart and soul into creating music and I feel like escape just has that curse where I'm really excited about something. And as soon as we release it, it's just getting shit on just because really? Really? it's me that's still singing for the band. You know, it just, it sucks, but how it is a, what it is. Right. How big a proportion of the fan base can that, would that be do you reckon? Because obviously there must be a big majority that's behind you and stuff. We, it's got to be a minority. Surely. Well, yeah, I'm still, know. I'm still able to, create music and people are still yeah. interested in recording the band and yeah, coming yeah, yeah. To the band shows you know if that wasn't true i don't think i'd be talking with you right now and have sure, upcoming sure. tour dates you know yeah, yeah, so it hasn't it hasn't been detrimental to where the band's not able to do what we love to do anymore and that's create music you know it's my it's my anti-drug i i love it it's nice. it's my heart and soul so but it is so just it's difficult it's difficult to release music and just get yeah. crapped on because you're the new guy that's been there for almost two decades. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. When you say it like that, almost two decades. It's crazy. Yeah. It's nuts. Speaking, uh, you mentioned when we were young at the top of this, I uh, just want to talk about that very briefly. Um, obviously that's that, that, you know, that's become a big thing. Although I suppose, you know, there's very similar festivals and now that like warp tour are coming back for some, I, Last I heard some festival dates next year. But um, when we were young, I guess this is going to be the third one. Um, mm -hmm. How are you feeling about being part of that? What other acts are you excited to be sharing that bill with? Because it's quite obviously within our world and the collective mix, I would say. Yeah, oh, it's <laughs> it definitely is, stacked. It is stacked. How do I feel about being included in that? Yeah. Eternally grateful. It, nice. You know, I'm, I judge myself a little too harshly and... I'm sure that added a lot to the alcoholism I had throughout the years yeah. and always getting up here and not thinking I'm good enough. But just the fact that I'm on the lineup is like, wow, you know, yeah. like there's so many, I, I want to go watch as many of the bands on that. Who would be your, in your, like your top three? Oh, I got to go see my chem. Okay. Number yeah. one. I got to yeah. go see my chem. Um, let me, let me pull it up. Cause I know I was like debating. There's some bands that I've seen before and I'm like, yeah, do I sacrifice not seeing them so I could go <laughs> see these other guys? And then I'm like, yeah, 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 but they're playing that album though. And I don't want to miss out on seeing them. I've seen them before, but have I seen them play that album? No. So I'll tell you exactly. Yeah. But it is insanely stacked and a wow, nice kind yeah. of variation. So stacked. Yeah. Story, story of the years on there. I would want to go see them. The used, you know, we did some tour dates for Story of the Year. Definitely want to see the use. I want to see the A Day to Remember guys. I want to see Under Oath. I want to see Seo Sin. She owed us <laughs> doing some stuff. I want to see Devil Wears Prada. I, I want to see a Trey you because they're doing that album. <laughs> the Alisana guys are playing. I haven't seen them play in I don't know how long. So I want to try to catch at least a song. I, I might just be running around yeah <laughs> watching a song and then running to the next stage and who knows maybe the majority of the crowd will be doing the exact same thing with me <laughs> i noticed you you, di you didn't list any straight up pop punk bands there is that because are you not really into that as a genre do you need there to be like a heavy element or or is it because there's too many bands that are more up your street so i was more into the kind of heavier stuff i wasn't as yeah. into the straight up pop punk bands not to say that i didn't like it Mm -hmm. just that I was a little more into the other ones. Got it. You know, I obviously always played a bunch of newfound glory and blink One Eighty Two. Like those songs are, were always on my playlist. I was just, right. I leaned a little more into, into the other bands. So go back to family home life. Uh, how many, how many kids is it you have now? Two, two kids. Yeah. Um, what, so I'm curious what kind of music they're into and if they're fans of Escape the Fate or any of your projects they, and what, they are what that fans, relationship's like. Okay. They are fans of Escape the Fate. How big of fans, I don't know. Okay. My daughter will be 18 soon, so she's definitely at wow. that age. 
Yeah. You know, but we have a, I have a very good relationship with my kids. I love them so much. Um, I always send her uh, unreleased demos. I'm like, all right, what do you think about this? Because Yeah, I want yeah, her honest opinion on it. yeah. Um, Yeah. but I will say I was very proud when she hit me up and said, hey, dad, you think you could get me tickets to Deftones? Oh, really? I'm like, you want to go Wow. see Deftones? I'm like, yeah, that's awesome. And, and and had she always kind of been into that, like the rock world, or did that just kind of come from nowhere? Oh, yeah. You know, I brought her out on tour over to the UK and Europe when she was about Oh, did you? four Okay. around Halloween. So I was I was lucky enough to be able to bring them out with me again Amazing. on the last time we just went recently. So my son wasn't around yet. And my Yeah. daughter was was four at the time. And now she's almost 18. So she's been around the shows for a while. Yeah. My son came up and sang Broken Heart on stage with us in Italy. Really? Uh, when we were in London, we ran around and tried to find the exact locations from the pictures we still had when she was four. Oh, And the last time we were there, that's we tried nice. to recreate Yeah. them. So I put that Yeah. up on my Instagram. But I mean, that's what it's all about. You know, I just Yeah. I love being a dad. I love my kids so much. It's it's the greatest gift. And I know I thank them all the time for sharing me because obviously making music is a dream and a passion of mine, but it takes me away from them a, a lot. you know, and it, it, it made things different. You know, we don't live in the same state, even when I'm off the road. So we got to figure out Mm -hmm. really when you guys okay come in here, when am I flying up there? We got to spend time yeah together. So I talk with them about that. I hope at the end of the day, if anything, it shows them that anything is possible. Like, Hey, I didn't even know I could do this. And here I am out there traveling the world, playing my music, whatever your passion is, you can do it. And anything they ever need, I'll do my best to be there for them. So When I had them out there with me on the road, it was just, it was the best of every world. You know what I mean? It's Yeah. like, here I am playing my music live. I got my kids right here with me. I'm able to show them the world. What other Yeah. job would I be able to have where this would be possible? You know? Yeah, So that's that would be seldom. Yeah, eternally grateful that's for that. that's very cool. And then obviously you mentioned the UK there. So obviously you've kind of been over here a few times. Like we mainly have US listeners to this show, but we are a UK show. So I'm going to be selfish Yeah. and just ask you a couple of things about being here. Does it annoy you that we call you Craig and not Craig? Because... That that always No, spun because me out. The pronunciation Craig, difference of that I have of plenty that name. of plenty of uh, British friends. Would you say would you say Brits? Is that the proper way to say? Uh, yeah, you yeah, Brits, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's the proper way to say Craig is, is Craig. Well, I'm glad you That's said how you it. say I didn't it. I didn't It's want to a be the Scottish first one to name, say that. so definitely Craig. That's Yeah. how you say Craig. So Yeah. it's just funny that I know that I myself and everybody else where I'm from is saying my name incorrectly. Like I know that, but Yeah. <laughs> okay, fair enough. what are you going to do? <laughs> That's what I yeah. grew up with. Yeah, yeah. And uh, what are some of your favorite spots over here in terms of towns and cities or maybe venues or restaurants within those places? A anywhere that jumps out when I ask you that question? Weather spoons. <laughs> Dude, I was just And everyone editing. over there is like, Weatherspoons, what are you talking about? Some some people agree. Some people are like, they almost treat Weatherspoons over there like I'm talking about Denny's in the US. Like, what Denny's is your favorite restaurant? What are you talking about? But we don't have anything like Weatherspoons That's in true. the US. And That's I true. I love it. You know what I mean? We And the food is just, even if everybody locally thinks Weatherspoons isn't the best quality food, compared to the quality of similar places in the US, the food quality is amazing. So for me, I'm like, we got to go to the Weatherspoons. Yeah, Dope yeah. Wi-Fi, dope food. Yeah. Scan the QR code. They bring it to your table. This Exactly. is great. Easy. And in Yep. most city, well, every city pretty much. Yeah, it's funny you say that. We we just, we partnered with a festival in Pittsburgh that, that flew us out earlier in the summer. And I was just editing a little uh, interview that we did with a band out there. And I said the same thing about the UK and he just goes, spoons. And I have to turn to the camera and I'm like, because this is for an American audience. I'm like, <laughs> mm yeah, -hmm. that's a chain of British pubs that's uh, very reasonably priced. And uh, it's a yes bit of a thing over reasonably here. priced the food is good and yeah you can find it in a lot of places and and it's better than mcdonald's <laughs> that's true that's true um dude i think we could probably wrap that up up there i, I uh, really appreciate uh you giving us some of your time this afternoon it's been uh, a pleasure Thank you very much, man. Yeah, once we announce we're coming back over there, you got to come out to a show. yeah would love that appreciate that man
Okay. All right, brother. Have a good one. Thanks.